Mutant Year Zero Road, Edenus Turn Based, Tactical RPG Based on Tabletop Game Mutant Zero, and developed by the Bearded Lady Studio and published by Funcom in December 2018. Today I will be talking about the main game and the DLC, and will be answering question you all have: Is Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden worth playing in 2024? Let's start. Story was interesting, especially how humans are remembered by new people in this world. How they called them ancients, some see them as gods, some see as them foolish existence. How they see even quite normal things quite weirdly, like one ghoul saying, This is school, where small monsters go to become bigger monsters, etc. And depending on which character you have to choose to explore, you will see different dialogue for different situations. Even though it's small touch, it gives you variety and feels like every character has their own personality. But sadly, cutscenes are just images with voice lines. They look cheap and bad and can't support the story well enough. Wish there was more cutscenes like the one we had in the opening of the game. It was pretty cool and I thought all cutscenes will be like that, but sadly it's not. Now I will be giving DLC story ending spoilers. If you don't wanna get spoiled, just skip to the next segment of the video. The main game ended with plot twist and the real ending was in the DLC. At the start of the DLC, our partial open world and maps we are in before kind of changed and got covered with a red wine. Goohoos we are possessed by it, then later enriched until the Ark and possessed Ark's people as well. While we're progressing to stop these vines, we learned it was coming from legendary old tree called Jaiko, a mountain tree created by the Elder and Sciences for cleans the toxic air ancients had before. Jaiko was left its own for years when the shit went down in the Eden, and while he was alone, he grew strong and kept doing the mission given by the ancients and started cleaning the toxins. Mutants, ghouls, and replaced with cleaner his own versions. At the end, we stopped Jaiko and Bormin became the next elder and story and pretty good. Even though I hate not ending stories with the main games and leaving the DLCs, at least this one had well written ending. The first half of the game feels quite tedious and hard and has quite boring combat cycle. You are forced to use same tactic over and over again, playing stealth, finding enemies alone, using silence and guns and killing enemies one by one over and over again until we kill all of them because if you don't you can't progress or have a very hard time enemies hits like a truck and they are pretty much bullet sponges it's not logical to go open fight with them so going into open fight means you have to fight with multiple enemies same time and because of things i explained that either means you will spend too many resources for no reason or simply die but at the mid game combat becomes better you start relying stealth and killing enemies one by one tactic less, start using different skills you opened along the way, discover new and more enjoyable tactics to kill your enemies, and even get the point you can have some open fights as well, so even though it takes a bit time combat becomes enjoyable with mid game for sure. Every character has their own abilities, weaknesses and strengths, you can't respect your skills, so following quits for characters especially until mid game could be a good idea. But keep in mind, if you do side quests and other stuff in the end, you should be able to open nearly every skill, so it really doesn't matter that much. Another problem I can say about the combat is the game actually not having percentages for shots and lying to you. Because even game gives you percentages for shots or abilities, they are mostly scripted. Doesn't matter how many times you save or lot in same positions, your character does exact same damage or some characters always absorb mind control, etc. And that's quite annoying to be honest. We have quite lots of different enemy types, but aside from some very specific enemies like tanks or shamans, you really don't feel like you need to use different tactics against them. Bosses though, another topic, they mostly have their own kind of unique skills and you will need to use different skills or items. Like in Luke's fight, you have to use hat to make your characters immune to might control or the fight becomes harder since boss can take control of your own man. The game has hub system, something we can call a limited open world. You travel between them and those hubs have their own enemies, lootables, designs, etc. 
In the map you are in, there is always some hidden loot scattered around and you gotta search the wall area you are in because of loot being limited. So you gotta search nearly every corner of the maps you go in. This is alone enough to say, kind of annoying. But what actually makes them more annoying is having slow sprint. It really doesn't help at all. Wish it was a bit more faster. Still, our limited open world design is quite good and even had changes with the DLC story, so I guess it's kind of well made. If we don't count cheap looking cutscenes, visual of the game looks pretty good for its own style, especially how they use it, light and colors are quite good. The characters have interesting design and the limited open world design is well made as well. Aside from the main subjects, there are some small stuff I should say, like you are not being able to sell extra items you have. You can only dismantle weapons or characters you can get with the DLC not really being useful and coming with only 30 skill points. Even though you have 80 skill points for your every character at that point of the game or only shop the game has been quite useless. I don't know who made this item list but shop still keep selling shitty as fuck early game items at the end game is just fucking annoying. Only for one or two times she had good inventory to buy and all I got from her was one armor and one scope. Aside from that, she had literally nothing usable to buy. Pros The story, characters and small touches here and there they made about the lore we are interesting and mostly well written. The real ending we had in the DLC was good. Most games these days do shitty job with the endings so it's big pro. Nearly every character has their own unique designs and abilities to suit them. Meet and end game combat was fun to play. Enemy and boss variety was decent. Limited open world design was good. The game has a good looking visual style and design for its own style. Cons. Cutscenes look cheap and bad. Early game combat was tedious, hard and boring. Percentages being script and the game kind of flung with them. Looting was quite tedious especially with half slow sprint speed the game has. Existence of small problems I talked about. Verdict. Honestly this game is underrated hidden gem for sure and deserves more attention. Aside from some small hiccups here and there this might be even better than XCOM 2 considering how messy XCOM 2 was. So answer to is it worth playing question is yes it's worth playing for sure. And that's all for this video thanks for watching it subscribing to the channel and clicking that bell. See you next videos goodbye.